Well, we've got Pat Moore on the line and we're going to talk about her book, Welcome to the Happy Town, a children's book about compassion and love. How are you, by the way, Pat? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's good. still light and sunny where you are, I see. Yes, yes it is. I'm in Virginia. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So this book, Welcome to Happy Town, just take it from there, really. How would you describe it? It's about all the wonderful things in life that are around us every day that we tend not to notice. And and if we do, we tend not to hold on to. And uh, it's about realizing that these things are there all the time and Mm. that we have a choice about what kinds of things we think about. Uh, We can, you know, think good things or we can think bad things. And then the things that we think about and hold on to are what cause our feelings and whether we're happy or, you know, whether we're having a good day, a bad day, a good life, a bad life. And it's a children's book. Do you think that that's an important lesson to learn at a young age? I do. I I think it, you know, this, I think when we're children, that's the time our minds are formed you know, and yeah. our habits are formed. And uh, so what we grow up uh, learning about and focusing on and um, ma- will make all the difference in the rest of our lives. Um, so there's, you know, there's a. I I started writing and reading a lot of positive things during COVID. These yeah. are things I already know. You know, I know <laughs> that we have a choice about what we think about, and I know there are lots of good things in the world. But I needed to really make myself focus on them. And yeah. as I was doing that, I realized how important it was to grow up learning about these things. And if I had, if I had, uh, when I was growing up, if these had become the focus of my life, it wouldn't be as difficult as it is yeah. what we sometimes do now. Yeah. It's interesting that you found a lot of positive things to read during COVID because that was a negative time for many people. And I guess for children, it's something that they had to go through that adults had no experience of and had no way to kind of empathise. That's right. And I I do have a, a lot of, uh, I have seven grandchildren and I have a, a large family. We're very close. So a lot of great nieces and nephews too and they were all suddenly isolated and um you know they were it was hard for them not to be afraid of what was going on and whether they might get covid whether their parents might get covid whether their grandparents might get it and um you know they were detached they were detached from their friends at school and doing things online and so it was a difficult time for them but um we managed to get together with them uh a couple times a year, and since there's seven grandchildren, that's quite a few times. And when when I'm with my grandchildren, I always find that um, I'm happier, and I'm happier because I'm doing fun, happy things with them. And, yeah. And, and so uh, one of my my youngest grandchild, uh, uh, well, one of the youngest, I have one now that's just a month old, but uh, his mm. uh, her brother is five years old, and we uh, would draw pictures a lot. And then we would write some stories about about them. So that's kind of where I got the idea of doing this. I like to write. I always have yeah. written, but I write have tended to write more adult things. Mm. But um, I realized that this was fun for him and it was fun for me too. And what was it that got you interested in writing way back at the start? Oh, way back at the start, I, you know, this is one of those things your teachers have such a profound impact on kids. Yeah. But I had wonderful experiences at school, especially in grammar school. My teachers were always very supportive of me. They always uh, told me I was a good writer. I, I read well, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, now what I was told was I wasn't good at uh, drawing and painting. So therefore, I don't draw and paint, but I write. And I read a lot and I've always enjoyed it. And, um, you know, so that's that's where it started. It's carried all the way through. Yeah. It's, uh, I did a, a lot of technical writing in the work I did until I retired. Uh, but I belong to two writer groups and two book, book groups. And um, we all have fun together doing this and sharing what we're reading and writing. So Yeah. And illustrations tend to be an important part of children's books. So yes. despite the fact that you don't draw and paint, do you mm-hmm. still have illustrations in the book? Oh, yes. Every... 
these books are pretty much for four to eight year olds. And I know yeah. uh, from my grandchildren, they like the pictures very much. I often uh, read to my grandchildren mm. over uh, FaceTime and uh, they'll always say, show me the picture, you know, at the beginning yeah. again. So I know that's important. So I, I um, my husband and I had, have a small publishing uh, business and we published some books for people before. So I knew about stock pictures. So yeah. I, I looked into that and uh, really they're, there's lots around, lots of good illustrators. And um, so I, I probably spend almost as much time finding the pictures to match the words yeah. as I do writing the words. Because children's <laughs> books are, you know, like a thousand words or something. So that's yeah. really only like four type pages. So mm. it's pretty, to me, they're not that difficult to put together. Yeah. But matching them up with pictures uh, takes a considerable amount of time. But it makes all the difference in the world. Too. <laughs> it's fun for me. Sometimes yeah. I see a picture and uh, I change what I've written. You know, it, it expands my thought. So, yeah, it's interesting you say it's not difficult because, you know, you don't have to fill as much space. But That's does right. that sometimes make it difficult? Because maybe you've got yes. loads of ideas Absol- that you don't absolutely. have enough room for. All of, everything starts out three to three to four thousand words minimum. Yeah. And I have to figure out how to <laughs> cut it down. Uh, in a way that's, you know, still fun and interesting for kids. Yeah. yeah. But I learn a lot in the process. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Is finding a way to cut it down still easier than it would be if you were stuck on 200 words trying to make it longer? I guess it would depend on the subject. I've always yeah. tended to write more than I need. So I, everything I've ever done, I've had to edit down. <laughs> yeah. So that part, of, that part I'm used to. However, I, <laughs> um, I, I, I wrote the, the book, Welcome to Happy Town. I also have this one here called uh, the pumpkins of happy town uh-huh. that was about halloween but also thanksgiving and then i have one coming out on uh the happy holidays Ooh. the happy holidays one is rhyming and i've never done that before and that was yeah. that was more of a challenge in terms of saying what i wanted to say in a thousand words and then having rhyming couplets yeah. so yeah that's interesting because some people would maybe find rhyming easier because they just have to think of the first part and then look up <laughs> something that rhymes and then just kind of make up the second part. But I oh. suppose there's still a part of it that has to make sense. You can't just choose any word to rhyme with the first word you put. Right. I actually wrote the book first and it was much too long mm. uh, because it's about um, it's it's about the holidays. So it's about Hanukkah and Christmas and Kwanzaa. Yeah. And I I thought that was important for a lot of reasons, but one is that my I have grandchildren whose parent whose mother is Jewish and father is my son. So they celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. Yeah. And I know uh when my son was growing up Kwanzaa was becoming more and more of a thing and I just thought I can't write about one, you know, one holiday and not all three. They're they're important. So what once I did that though, I had I had thousands of words and I had to figure out how to how to cut it down. And I actually realized I thought this is gonna be boring if I don't figure <laughs> out <laughs> something. And and that's when I decided, let me see if I can make these things rhyme. And it actually helped me to cut some things out, but to make them more fun too. Yeah. And what can your grandchildren expect for Christmas? Are they gonna get a copy of all the books? Oh, they well, they get a copy each time. I dedicated the first one to them, but of course I'm gonna give them all of them. But that's not really what they get. <laughs> you know, it depends on their age. They all want something different. Yeah. My uh, five-year-old grandson, who's about to be six, is recent. Last year, he got a Nintendo Switch Ooh. for uh, Christmas, and uh, his main, the thing he most likes now is Mario and all the Mario, you know, relationships. So, yeah. a lot of what he's going to want are Mario toys, not necessarily the games, but all kinds of co- toys and Legos and things that they have. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the three-month-old, uh, she'll be three months at Christmas. She doesn't know what she wants, so I'll give her a <laughs> Yeah, a bit weird <laughs> if she did know what she wants. Right, and then the older <laughs> ones, actually, I have, the older ones are, one's in high school and the rest are in college. Yeah. And um, they mostly like to have cash and to choose their own things. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I had the same kind of relationship with all of them when they were younger. And I think that's part of why I wrote this, too, because it helped helps me to hold on to and maybe will be a good memory for them of yeah. those years when they were smaller and we spend much more time together yeah. and more in common. 
<laughs> yeah, it's easier to buy Christmas presents for children at that age, isn't it? Because there's always something they want. Whereas when that's you're right. older, that's right. <laughs> you're not really sure what they want. I mean, to be fair, when they're that age, they might want something that's way out of your price range. But right. still, at least they've got an idea of what they want. That's right. And they they really would, they like to choose their own. I think they like sort of the power of yeah. you know, having their own money and be able to get what they want. And sometimes if things are out of the price range, well, two or three of us will pitch in together and then they still get what they want. So so how long did this book, Welcome to Happy Town, actually take you to come up with overall? Well, I actually, from beginning to, from the time I actually decided to do it until the end was seven weeks. But I mm. would say it was in way a lifetime, but certainly the, you know, <laughs> two, three years of COVID because I was reading all of these positive books and writing a lot of positive things yeah. and writing these little stories with my with my grandson. So um, all the thoughts and ideas were there. And um, I just had to, you know, get them down on on paper, find illustrations, uh, find a place to help me publish it. <laughs> yes. And um, and it was a quicker process than I would have thought. But I, anything I've ever helped people people published before were, you know, 300, 400 pages without pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a nightmare trying to get somewhere to publish it. This is self-published through Amazon. So I, yeah. Amazon Pro Hub helped me with it. Um, I'm not, I'm, I do pretty well for my age with computers, but I don't think uh, trying to, to set up the book myself on um Amazon just seemed like too much of a challenge. I also have a, a long novel I've been writing for years, and I decided to do this because I thought, well, if nothing else, it'll be like a class on how to publish a book through Amazon. Yeah. And um, before I try to do something as um, big a, a project as a novel, I thought I'll just do one of these little books. And then I got hooked, though, because now I've got the third one coming out next week. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's all a bit of a push. Yeah, but it, you know what? It's been a happy experience for me, you know, because the books yeah. are happy. You can't help but be happy when you, you know. And for me, if I'm if I'm having a difficult moment, I, honestly, I read I read them and they put me in a in a good mood. Yeah. You know, I, I remember what's important. You must be enjoying it because you're churning out the books very quickly. <laughs> well, like I said, it's really there's a way in which they've been coming together for a lifetime, mm. or certainly a few years. And they're sure yeah. for me, you know, I, I belong to two writer groups. So three yeah. times a month, I write about four pages for these writer groups. And I try to make them, you know, pretty, I try to write them well. So yeah. that's about how, how many words are in each of these books. So, you know, I'm, I'm good at that part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of all the books you've written, which one would you say are you the most proud of so far? The one I really think the Happy Holidays, which is coming out uh, yeah. next week. Yeah, I, I like it. Because it's about, it really is about um, people coming together, yeah. accepting each other, enjoying each other. Um, you know, all those good feelings we have in December, trying to hold on to them all year long. Um, and yeah. I, I, it just came together for me in a way I was, I, I'm happy. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that book's coming out next week, of course. Are yeah. there any other books on the way after that that you have planned? Yeah. Yes, I have one hey. coming out. I do have one coming out on groundhogs. Uh, this came up with my grandson, uh, and we were at the beach. And we started writing a little story. And I actually had the first draft of that finished, but then my Christmas is a big deal to me and holidays are our birthday celebrations. I love it. So yeah. my son kept asking me after the after I'd written the Halloween book, aren't you gonna write one about Christmas? He couldn't believe I wasn't gonna and I said, you know, it just seems like it's gonna be too difficult because I don't want to write about just Christmas. I wanna write and I don't know that much about these other holidays. And yeah. um, but uh so anyway, that's how that that third one came. But the and so the ground hug book is pretty much finished but i put yeah. it aside to, to to do the chris the holiday one yeah the groundhog one again yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna release it like the day after as well just to confuse people no no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> but uh you know the po it takes some time to publish it so one of the things mm. like the halloween book thanksgiving book came out kind of late so i realized you really got to get it in there ahead of time so yeah. i may you know get it ready and it'll be ready in december groundhog's day is february 2nd so it's not really Really yes. that far away, right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, in the meantime, where can we check out this current book that you've talked about today? Welcome to Happy Town. Well, you can uh, buy it at Amazon as a 
an ebook or a paper uh, paperback. You can buy it at Barnes and Noble. Yep. Uh, Ingram is also providing it to stores, and I have a website uh, www.thinkbetterthoughts.com, and you can go there and find out about my my past, my the books I have planned, and uh, also you can link to these places where you can buy the book. Excellent. Well, many thanks for coming on the show and have a great Christmas when it comes. I'm looking forward to it.